What up? It's your girl, Miss Lancaster. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Just kidding. On the EOC, you're going to have a type of question called a constructed response, which will require you to respond in a brief, like four to five sentence paragraph. These questions are easy to maximize your score on the EOC because there can be more than one correct answer. But the people who score the exam are looking for some very specific things in your answer in order for you to earn full credit. So today I'm going to show you a strategy called race, which will help you to structure your, re your response and make sure your answer has everything it needs to have in it in order for you to earn full credit. Here we go. So the constructive response questions easily look something like this. How does the speaker use an extended metaphor to develop the theme of mother to son? Use evidence from the text to support your answer. In this case, mother to son is a famous poem by the poet Langston Hughes. It's a poem where a mother is talking to her son, comparing her life to a staircase and using the staircase as a metaphor for difficulties in life. All right, so this question looks simple, it looks short, but it's really a lot more complicated than that. Here's what it's really asking. Do you know what an extended metaphor and a theme are, and can you apply those definitions to this poem? In other words, what is the extended metaphor in this poem, and what is the theme of this poem? It's also testing whether you know how to cite textual evidence. And through all of this, it's testing whether you can write clearly so that others can understand what you're communicating. So this is kind of like one, two, three, four questions in one packed into this one little sentence here. So they can be tricky to answer, but I don't want you to get stressed out yet because I have a very simple method you can use that will help you understand these questions, break them down, and answer them correctly so that you get full points for these on the EOC. So the process is, first, you read the question carefully and put yourself in the shoes of the exam scorers. What are they trying to test you on using this question? So if you see an English class vocabulary word, something like theme or tone or language or diction, or simile, anything like that. They're trying to see that you know what that word is and that you understand it well enough to apply it to whatever the text is you're reading in the EOC. Uh, the second thing you need to think about is that you are always going to need to provide direct textual evidence in the form of a quote. For some reason, they really like quotes. They don't like it if you paraphrase or summarize. They want a direct quote from the text. The third thing you need to keep in mind is that you always will need to explain your answer clearly like you're talking to a five-year-old. You cannot assume they know anything. Honestly, I'm not sure they even have access to the passages you have on the EOC. They might just be going by what your, um, what your response says alone. So you have to explain everything completely. Okay, I don't want you to get too, too stressed out because all of this can be accomplished in about four or five sentences. They're not asking you to write an essay. It's not as hard as it seems like it is. When you do step one, I suggest you make a list. If you see of English class vocabulary word, um, go ahead and write that down so you can make sure you don't forget to apply it to the text in your answer. Um, and the next thing I would do is go and find my textual evidence. So which quotes am I going to use in my answer? Once you've finished that, you're ready to move on to the next stage, which is the actual writing part. That is when the race strategy comes in. Once you finish planning your answer, you use race to structure it. What is race, you might ask? Here we go. Race stands for restate the question, answer the question, cite evidence, and explain your evidence. So restate the question means that you are going to switch the sentence or the question around so that it becomes a statement. So if you had a question, what is the color of the sky? And you restated that, it would become the color of the sky is. So in the case of our pretend constructive response question here, 
It says, how does the speaker use an extended metaphor to develop the theme of mother to son? We're going to say, the speaker uses an extended metaphor to develop the theme of mother to, mother to son by. This is going to be the first half of the first sentence in your constructed response. You answer the question in the second half of the first sentence of your constructed response. So how does she use the extended metaphor uh, to develop the theme? Well, she compares life to a staircase and insists that her son does not give up in the face of difficulty. So the first half of this, comparing life to a staircase, answers the extended metaphor part and the insisting that her son not give up in the face of difficulty covers the theme part. But it's not enough to just answer the question, I have to prove how I know that. So that's how you move on to the cite evidence step, the C in race. I've already gathered some lines from the poem here that I want to use. Notice that I've put them in quotation marks because they're not my own words, and I've put an MLA citation at the end. So in the parentheses, this is your in-text citation. You use the author's last name, and then if it's poetry, the lines from the poem that you use. So these are lines four through six, and the period goes outside of the parentheses. Oh, and if you are citing verse of any kind, like this is poetry, or it might apply to a, um, an epic poem or a play or something like that, then you can use a slash like this to show that there is a line break there. You don't have to type it the same way that it's formatted on the page. Okay, so these are the two pieces of evidence I want to use. They're both taken directly from the text, because remember, that's what they want to see, direct quotes. And what I need to do is introduce them. On the wall, next to the door, you can look over and see I have a collection of sentence starters you can use to introduce your evidence. You do not have to use these, but they're, if you can come up with something else, but they're a good starting point if you're not sure what else to put. So I'm going to say, according to the text, or sorry, according to the speaker, the staircase, okay, I'm going to delete this actually so I can continue my sentence, quote, had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up in places with no carpet on the floor. Hues four through six. And then I'm going to explain my evidence. The tacks, splinters, and uh, torn up boards and bare places represent uh, challenges in life. Okay, so I've explained my first piece of evidence. Now I need to explain my second piece of evidence, but I need to introduce it first. Um, later in the poem, the speaker tells her son, quote, don't you fall now, for I still going, honey, I still climbing. Hughes 17 through 19. And then I explain that quote. Despite the problems she has encountered in her life, she wants her son to demonstrate perseverance. I should probably note at this point that um, you can either do it the way I've done it here, where you give one piece of evidence and then explain it, and then give another piece of evidence and explain it, or you can put both of your pieces of evidence first and then explain all of the evidence together. Either way is perfectly acceptable. It just depends on whatever works best for the question you're answering and your own good judgment. Okay, so I've used the race strategy now. I need to go back and take out my um, my training wheels here where I've written out the strategy. So delete, 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 and delete. Okay, and my final step is 
to proofread my answer for grammatical errors. And what do you know? I have one right here. I said, according to the, the to the speaker. Get rid of that the. Uh, I don't see any other issues. So then I would be ready to submit my response. Please do not stress out too much about this early in the semester. We will have more than enough time to help you get up to shape if you are confused by this or you don't do perfectly on your first try. That is totally normal. All right, I, best, I guess that's all there is to this for right now. And uh, if you have questions, you can ask me later in class. Thank you.